Brahma, deception is found throughout the animal kingdom from very low levels. Uh, and certainly in, in, uh, in, in human beings, it's, it's expressed as we know. Um, from, from your work, um, how does deception work? Deception is fascinating. It occurs very, much more frequently than you re realize. Yeah. For example, recently a survey conducted by people on how intelligent they were. Is your intelligence above average or below average? 90% of people say it's above average, <laughs> which means 40% of people are in denial about their stupidity. <laughs> so self-deception right. is very common. Why does it occur? I think it occurs to stabilize behavior. You've seen this in patients. For example, patients who've got arm uh, paralysis as a result of stroke engage in a curious form of self-deception, believing seriously that their arm is not paralyzed. It only happens in the right hemisphere is damaged, the left side is paralyzed. Oh. Because the so-called denial hemisphere is the left hemisphere. That's what engages in denial to smooth over periods of difficulty in your life. Oh, oh. So, for example, in this case, patient left arm is paralyzed completely. Patient sitting in front of me, and I said, "Can you use your left arm?" She says, "Oh yeah, I can use my left arm." She says, "Right." Then I say, "Can you touch my nose with your left arm?" She says, yeah, I can touch your, my, your nose with your left arm. Yeah. Okay. Whose arm is this? <laughs> it's my brother's arm. She says. <laughs> She disowns it and says, "Become the your brother." Okay. He says, "Where is your brother?" <laughs> My brother is under the chair, I think. And it doesn't occur to her why should her brother be hiding. An absurdity the situation doesn't dawn on her. Right. Then comes the best bit. I said, "Okay, I want you to touch my nose with your left hand." Do you know what she does? Uh, oh. Now it means somebody in there knows yeah. it's paralyzed, even though she's denying that it's paralyzed. Yeah. Somebody in there knows it's her hand, even though she, earlier she said it's her brother's hand. Who's doing that? Right? So the multiple layers of belief can coexist in one brain. Wow. And, and this, this coherencing of behavior is one of the unsolved problems in neurology. Mm. How people can engage in such obvious self-deception. Mm. To you and me, it's obvious that somebody is a teenager is, 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 has a drinking problem. Denial is very common there. Right, right. Where well, it's not quite deception; it's not quite the same thing. But it, it's an act of self-deception, right? Right, right. But where, where the person is extremely smart, very intelligent but keeps going for a, for a, for a second, you know, for a binge, yeah. or, or a completely off addiction for, for a year or two, yeah. and then suddenly there's a trigger and he goes for it. Even though consciously he knows, at, 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 exactly. if you ask him, at every level he knows that he's doing the wrong thing. If some other person takes over, what do you mean by some other person takes over? This is all psychobabble. Yeah. In terms of neurons, what's, what's going on in the neural pathways? You know? yeah. We need to understand that. Yeah, yeah that, 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 <clears throat> absolutely fascinating. Um, but you're, you're asking about another aspect of some deception. Yeah, uh, yeah the, 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 the mechanisms by which deception occur, because you've described um, um, uh, abnormalities, uh, but what can that tell us about how deception is worked normally? For example, there's a, a psychological phenomenon Leon Festinger created called cognitive dissonance. Correct. And that is when we, we have a, uh, uh, two conflicting ideas and we try to hold them both at the same time, we actually change our belief. To accommodate. The, to accommodate. And yeah. so I, I then rationalize what are obvious contradictions. Right. This classic one is when prophecies <laughs> are made by religious cults. Uh, when the prophecies don't occur, the, the, the uh, leaders or the people change their belief structure and actually believe it more after the prophecy fails. Right. So it's when prophecy fails. But I can so, speak to this question. Yeah. I, mean, I can speak to this question in, in so far as the brain is concerned. Yeah. It seems very likely that the left hemisphere is more prone to delusion and deception than the right hemisphere. In fact, I often refer to the right hemisphere as a hemisphere for the devil's advocate is in the right hemisphere. Because you don't want to overdo the self delusion and self deception. Yeah. After a point it gets it gets maladaptive. It's good to say I can still beat you in tennis with my with my damaged elbow. Yeah. But if I say I can lift weights, then you're in trouble. Yeah. So there's, there's a threshold you reach beyond which you don't want to engage in denial just to smooth over, tide over difficult periods. Right. But that threshold is picked up by the right hemisphere, it kicks you in the butt, and orients you. So look, you're going too far, it's time to give up this delusion, return to reality and start from scratch. Yeah. So there's an interplay of, of forces between the two hemispheres, a sort of a dynamic equilibrium between extreme delusion, you think you're Napoleon, you think you can conquer the world, you can, or when people are a mania, for example, buy, use credit cards, buy Ferrari, they don't have any money in the bank. <laughs> Which is the other end of the spectrum, everything is devil's advocate takes us, takes over, and, and life is gloomy. And, <laughs> in fact, they're more realistic. People, people who are depressed, yeah. depressed. Now, now, how does that co comport with the, with the uh, the pop psych, the simplistic, the, the left brain is analytical and the right brain is uh, kind of emotional? It doesn't, right? It doesn't. The, the contradiction. It doesn't contradict it necessarily, but yeah. It, it, so, in terms of 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 the brain and normal functioning, 
Um, how, 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 does, how, how would you say deception works? Well, I think even in normal functioning, there's always turbulence around you. Destabilizing influences to carry on your daily life. You must engage in small amounts of denial mm. all the time. You're doing it all the time mm. to go about your daily life. Otherwise, your behavior will go, go completely crazy. Mm -hmm. And to avoid this, you have a stabilizing mechanism. That's what denial is. Part of the many different mechanisms you have for s stabilizing your behavior mm -hmm. and, and uh, proceed towards your goal without constantly changing your mind. Mm -hmm. so this, is, this is the primary goal of a defense mechanism. Not just denial, many of the Freudian mechanisms, which he invoked as a, to defend the ego, so to speak, mm -hmm. to use Freudian terminology, mm -hmm. is about um, conferring stability on behavior. For stability on behavior. Yeah. And, and, and if your devil's advocate goes wrong, then this um, attempts to disguise the true facts goes haywire, and you steer completely off course, and you start thinking you're Napoleon or you're mm -hmm. whatever. You know. but, but even in less extreme cases, it, it could affect your life. Sure. Yeah, I think in extreme cases, the different personality styles right, right. Of, th of thinking and personalities, and this may partly involve hemispheric specialization. Although it's, not, it's been overplayed in the popular press and it's not been adequately studied rigorously. Mike Gazaniga, of course, has made some valuable contributions to this.